NFTs, folks, I hate this topic. I'm going to be very honest with you guys. NFTs, crypto, I hate talking about it because, first of all, I have a lot of friends who are into NFTs and crypto. So if you guys are watching, we have patrons who are into NFTs and crypto. So if you guys are watching also, no disrespect. I love you guys. I love everyone. I'm not, I'm not here to say that people who are into crypto or NFTs are all idiots or are scammers, etc. A lot of people know what they're getting themselves into, which is essentially gambling. And if you know that and you're cool with that, then, hey, that's on you. Have fun with your money. Try to make more money off of it. Um, and it's a very complicated topic to talk about. I, I'm no financial expert. Uh, I'm not a technology expert. But most of my reference, I watched this amazing video that was recommended to me by Danny, uh, my friend Danny. Uh, it's called uh, The Problem with NFTs, and it is by Folding Ideas. It's on YouTube. It has over 6 million views at this point. It's over two hours long, so it is incredibly in-depth and detailed. And the host does a really, really, really good job of breaking down why cryptocurrency is a very bad sort of financial system or replacement for the current financial system. It is extremely imperfect. The people behind it are not to be trusted. Um, it's basically not going anywhere good. And NFTs are also just this other sort of, they're an excuse for cryptocurrency to exist and for people to use their cryptocurrency. Now, again, if you're going to ask me a bunch of technical questions, I'm going to refer you to that video because he does a much better job than I ever will able, be able to do in explaining what NFTs are. But what I do know is that the NFT industry is all based on speculation. It's a speculative industry. It's a bubble that is ready to burst. And the one thing I can point to, because something similar, I, I've been selling comic books since 2015. So I am a comic book expert, you could say. I've been in the business of selling and trading comic books for over seven years. In the 90s, the comic book industry had a massive crash. And there was a bubble that basically burst and thousands of comic book stores went out of business. They closed down all because of speculation, which is essentially what NFTs are the only value nfts have is based on speculation there's no real value there what am i talking about let me just try to explain so let's do this five minute story time with anthony and learn about the comic book crash of the 90s and why you can draw some parallels with nfts today so in the 90s um there were a lot of news stories of like people these old women or these old men who would find old comic books in their basements and you'd hear stories like this woman found an old Spider-Man comic and sold it for $100,000 or this man found a Superman comic and sold it for a million dollars because old comic books that were published in the 50s and the 60s are rare to find nowadays, like physically to physically hold an old copy of like the first Spider-Man issue. It's very hard to find. So they're very valuable. If someone finds an old like one of the first Spider-Man appearances in very good condition, it's going to be worth a lot of money because you simply cannot find them. So once all these stories of people selling their old comics for a lot of money started to become more and more popular and more and more prevalent in the 90s, people started to want to buy more comics. They're like, oh shit, if these people are selling their old comics for money, what if I buy a comic book today, then I'll be able to sell it for a lot of money in like five or 10 years. Now, what kind of comics sell for a lot of money? For example, I'm holding right here Fantastic Four, uh, number 52. This is the first ever appearance of the Black Panther. This is the first time Black Panther ever appears in a comic book. This issue is worth a lot of money. Um, it's worth, it could be worth thousands of dollars in pristine condition. Why is it worth a lot of money? Well, because it's very hard to find the first appearance of Black Panther. It just physically does not exist. And if it does, it's usually in bad condition because it's very old. This came out in 1966. So if someone tells you that this is worth thousands of dollars, it makes sense. You know, it's a very popular character, historic character. Um, uh, and it's his first appearance. So other than like old rare issues, what, what issues are usually worth a lot? Well, like we said, when a first, when a popular character first appears, that issue is usually expensive. When a popular character dies, that usually, that issue is usually also worth a lot of money. Sometimes there are very famous artists like Jack Kirby. If they draw a very famous cover, maybe the issue with that cover with the Jack Kirby art is worth a lot of money. So there's a reason for these things to be worth a lot of money. And again, they're usually rare. They're scarce. You can't find them. So in the nineties, comic book stores started to sell a lot more comics and people like us, they were seeing the news. They're like, holy shit, this guy sold a comic book for a hundred thousand dollars. I'm going to go to my local comic book store and I'm going to buy a whole bunch of comic books. Maybe those are going to become worth a lot of money. So what happened? People started buying more and more comics when a new issue like this one, this is a Venom issue from the nineties. Okay. It's the mace. It's part one of three. This is like a number one. So people would start to buy like five of these, one for them to keep and the four extra ones to sell later. That was all based on speculation. You know, people speculating that if I buy this now, it's going to be worth a lot. What was the problem? 
they were printing millions of these issues. There were millions of this Venom number one out in print. So it didn't matter how many you bought and kept, you know, in secret to sell later, they weren't going to be worth a lot of money because there were millions of these in print. Unlike the old Fantastic Four issue, there aren't a lot of these in print. So this is always going to be worth a lot of money. So people were stocking up on comics, especially 90s comics. Tons of comics. Every time like a number one would come out, people would buy tons of them. Uh, Marvel and DC started to take advantage of the situation and they would release alternate special covers. So there would be a normal cover like this one. Then a special gold foil, gold foil cover that shines or like is holographic just to, to get people to buy more and more of these issues. Well, soon after that, people realized that all these comics were buying were worthless. They would try to sell them back, but the value wouldn't go up. Why? Because millions of other people were doing the same thing. Everyone was buying 20 of these issues and like shoving them in a drawer at home, hoping that the value would go up. Well, the value never went up because there is no value here. It's, it's artificially created value. It's speculation. People hoping that the value is going to go up are just buying these in the hopes to sell them to some other sucker later down the line. So what ended up happening? People stopped buying comic books and comic book stores that had massive inventories of these comics couldn't sell them. So they had all of this inventory that they bought from Marvel and DC and they just couldn't sell them. So tons of comic book stores started to go out of business and the industry crashed in the 90s because that bubble, that speculative bubble that whatever comic you buy, you're going to be able to sell it for a lot more down the line just ended up not being true. NFTs today remind me of these comics from the 90s. For example, this picture of a monkey right here. Why is this worth like however much this costs, like tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars? This is like, you know what I mean? The art is irrelevant. It has no significance. It's just hype. It's just speculation. It's just influencers getting on applications being like, you need to buy these now before they sell out. It's FOMO, fear of missing out. And they're getting people who don't have money to invest in these things, thinking that they're going to sell them to make money later. Now, if you already have money, if you have disposable income and you want to have fun, try to buy an NFT to try to sell it for more money later, and you have that disposable money to lose, then go for it. Have fun. But don't try to convince people who don't have a lot of money that this is a legitimate way of making money because they're going to end up losing all of their money. That's, that's, my, that's kind of the warning that I want to give you. And, and by the way, I'm not telling you to like, sh I'm not shitting on NFT so that you guys go buy comic books thinking that this is the right investment. Don't do that either. It's very rare for you to buy a comic and for the value to actually go up. And, and actually, I even made that mistake a few years ago. Like, I'll, I'll be real with you guys and I'll admit, as a comic book seller, I made the mistake of selling comics to people that weren't worth a lot of money, but I would tell them that it might become worth a lot of money. I might be forgetting some stuff. And in the mid 2010s, like in 2014, 2015, when I started to sell comics, the comic book industry tried to pull the same shit they did in the 90s again with something called variant covers. They would release tons of variant covers to get collectors to buy more and more of them again to artificially inflate the value. But I'm not saying that new comics can't be worth any money. For example, Spider-Gwen, when Gwen Stacy becomes Spider-Man, her first appearance came out in 2014. That issue today is worth like $1,000. That is an issue that came out just a few years ago. It's worth, it could be worth more than the first appearance of Black Panther in some cases. So there are still exceptions. There are going to be some NFTs that come out that are worth something. You know what I mean? So there are always exceptions to the rule. And again, people are going to use the when people try to defend NFTs, they go like, don't you want artists to be able to sell their art online and make money and make a living? Absolutely, I do. But that's not what NFTs are right now. That's not what people are buying. What the fuck is up with this monkey? What is artistic about this monkey? What is the value behind this picture or the other thousands of other, just the same image of the same monkey with just like different glasses or something? I don't know. Again, it's, it's through a process called minting. They're AI generated. So it's not really an artist doing this. It, it's even to me that makes it even worse and that makes it even less valuable again this is worth money because this is this is fucking black panther's first fucking appearance yo okay okay so that is my problem with nfts it's kind of a scam people are trying to convince people who don't have money that they can make millions of dollars by just getting into the nft game when that's not the case you know you know how, how shitty the nft system is you could literally you could literally put out an nft for sale and you could make an offer on your own nft just create another digital wallet you go and bid on your own NFT to make other people think that it has a higher value than it actually has. Like imagine I put this out for sale and I ask for 10 bucks. Then I bid on my own item and I bid 30 bucks for it just to make it look like people are like, that's what people do with NFTs. So just be careful before you get into it. Watch that video. I cannot recommend it enough. The problem with NFTs from folding ideas, watch it. It's two hours. It's worth your time. 
if you guys want to come at me, okay, in the comments, please do it respectfully. I know the NFT topic and crypto is a, is a touchy subject, and I'm not accusing anyone of being of ripping people off or anything like that. But don't come at me and don't argue comic books with me, okay? That's that's what I do, okay? It's in my blood, baby. All right.